Yo, Cotton. Yo. How are you some of the birthday? Who are you want to see a drum here come on and go, you know? Eh. It's a place where I love to go myself, you know? Then we could take a vacation, you know? Watch ya. Greetings, massive. My name is Yure, and on the other side of the telephone line today with me, I've got a great artist uh, whose songs such as uh, No Touch the Style, Babylon Gone Crazy, Ghost Dance, Touch Her Where She Wanted Most, and many more are one of my favorites, and it's a real pleasure and honor to greet uh, today with me Mr. Joseph Cotton. Sir, how are you? No respect, King. No respect. Uh, where did we caught you at the moment? Um, I'm in Paris at the moment. Paris. Uh, how is situation in France uh, regarding music? Is there any car- concerts or parties? Well, we haven't we haven't any concerts since the um, the quarantine began last year, March. You know. Uh, so mostly um, live stream. You know. Uh, so it's the same situation all over. I know that uh, some artists uh, can't find inspiration in this situation, while others say they finally have uh, enough time to dedicate themselves to production. Uh, how do this lockdown situation reflects on you as an artist? I know you just released a tune talking about this name, Global Lockdown. Well, uh, apparently, um, like what like what you said some artists find inspiration i do find inspiration because you have more time to you know sit back and, and meditate and you know to create some luck for yourself so the lockdown is is very horrible but we still find time to do it because it's a music and we have to we have to keep sending the message out there so we don't make anything stop us from recording and writing songs and stuff like that Great to hear that. Uh, I want to dedicate a bit about uh, on yourself. Uh, can you like explain to our followers or present to our followers shortly who Joseph Cotton really is? Well, I'm, I started my career in 1976 in Jamaica uh, with Joe Gibbs. Formerly, my original name was Joe Alton, but when I came to London in the mid 80s, I changed to Joseph Cotton and made immediately there was a success with don't touch the style should be in half slim things running slow part of a cook uh, have quite a few songs yeah well we all know them they're great songs uh but before you uh, turned into music you were actually a police officer what changed your mind where did you find your inspiration for music no well my my dad want me, wanted me to do that and uh, when I left school. But then after visiting um, the studios in 1974 with Winston Jarrett and um, Corey Sandy and Freddie McKay, this is where my inspiration starts. And then I met Big Youth. And even before that, I used to move around Dennis Al Capone. So the inspiration was there, you know, Prince Buster, Derek Morgan, Stranger Call. So the inspiration was there and, you know, we, we decided that music would be the best way to to elevate and to bring the people together in a conscious way, you know? Uh, you already mentioned uh, you started with a different name, Joe Walton, and then changed uh, into Joseph Cotton. Why did you pick Joseph Cotton? Is there any story behind it? Yeah, my friend, my friend called me that, you know, in 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 England, a friend named Mikey Ben. Oh, I thought uh, uh, it was somehow uh, connected to uh, Joseph Cotton, who was also a very established uh, actor at the time. Yeah, I know this actor. Yeah, but he, his name is C O T T E N. Yeah, it's differently pronounced. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you also mentioned that you started your career under Joe Gibbs's uh, wing. Uh, then later you started working with uh, Harry Muddy, with whom you also did debut album. Uh, well, I work with Phil Pratt, and uh, the torture, torture where she wanted most was was Phil Pratt album. I did like uh, Stay Yard and Praise God with Harry Moody and uh, the Drifters and like Derek Carriot. Juice Connection, Polo Takeover, all kind of people come and dance was for the musical ambassador. 
I've done quite a few songs with uh, on Treasure Isle with uh, Sonia Pattinger. She produced on the I Know label. So I went there in 1978, recorded a few songs with John Holt and the Paragons and Brent Dow. And um, after start producing my own music in uh, 79, 1980, like top ranking, old boy and, you know, eating and me, girls in my watch me. On my own label. Uh, a lot of names. And I, I, Sorry. Yeah, and I also did some work for um, Carlton Pattison because we worked with King Tubbies at the time. So Carlton Pattison was a very famous producer back in those days, producing people like Larry Marshall and Johnny Ringo and, you know. It was all fun working for those people, you know. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, a lot of names uh, you just mentioned are real, real uh, legends of Jamaican music production, but maybe younger generation of your followers uh, know more about your work with Manu Digital. But I would like to know how is to compare to work with legendary producers, which you named, and a new wave producer such as Manu Di Digital. You well, what happened when I um, when I came to France? I met um, a young DJ by the name of Bigger Ranks. He was he was a young DJ at the time. He was unknown, and so we were at a student Bastille called Luther Yard, and that's where I met Bigger Ranks. And we did a song, a video called um, "Ear France Anthem," and this video started getting a lot of attention, and so. He went into X-ray production, start finding success, and then he brings me to X-ray production. That's where I found Money Digital. And Money Digital is a great guy. He's a very great producer. He's very talented. And um, yeah, man, we just do it. You know what I mean? We just do it like for the for the fun and for the pleasure. Because, like I said, music is 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 is, is the, um, the, the 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 food food for the thoughts you know yeah man, True that. Yeah, man. so <laughs> without without the music without the music because like bob marley once said music shall teach them a lesson so we use the music to teach the people and to put the people together you know in a, in a conscious way you know yeah. uh you already mentioned uh, that artists such as yourself and plenty others and your music brought us more than just parties. We were able to like evolve mentally and spiritually alongside your music and your messages. Do you think that music nowadays still have this charm or is it more like show business and parties? And... No, the music nowadays is different, you know, because, um, you know, it's not the same. First of all, they call the music dance hall now. They, they try to to bring a different section of the music, like to categorize the music into dancehall. And I don't know any music that is called dancehall because a dancehall is somewhere that the people come to dance. So when we started back in the days, we used to make up some bamboo lawns and, you know, make up our own dancehall where, where the people would come and enjoy themselves. So to be categorized in the music as dancehall, you know, the, the music is, is reggae music, you know what I mean? So, and then the message that they're sending now, it's not the same as like in 40 years ago when we were preaching love and peace. More Now it's more like violence in the music, you know? Yeah, more slackness. More slackness in the music and, you know, no respect, no respect, you know? Everyone is just doing their own thing. And in the Bible, in Psalms 87, verse 7, there's a scripture that says that the singers and the players on instruments shall be there. So if the Bible can say that, it means that the singer and the players and instrument is the is the people that God given the inspiration to bring good tidings unto the people. So we have to preach conscious and constructive lyrics, you know? Yeah, true. Well said, well said. Yeah, but I think that also this uh, youth artist, uh, slackness artist, they are not gonna 
survive the test of time like artists such as yourself i mean your songs from 70s 80s are still actual today it still get the message behind it well like the bible said many are called but a few are chosen you know so there's a lot of people who thinks that they have been called but they haven't been chosen you know what i mean so you can see that we were the chosen one because like Since 1976, I started doing my recordings. That's, that's over 40 years ago. And it's still relevant to the people, you know? Yeah, true. Uh, you said you were chosen one, but what do you consider that is the greatest uh, gift that music brought to you? The greatest gift that, pe that music brought to me is to communicate with people and to, <clears throat> to share, to share the love and the and the joy and the happiness that the music bring because whatever job you do, music is just a job. You know, like the, the, the man who fly the aeroplane or the, 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 the man who is a mechanic, that's his talent. So, you know, we all, we all, have, we all, all have, have our talents that we were given from, you know. So the music for me is just another job and you got to respect the people because without the support of the people we are nothing you know it's the people that give us the support you know i mean we, we still can find some uh, younger artists that are good do you can you yeah there is there is art there is artists out there that is good and there's artists out there but like i said then you gotta you gotta you gotta pick and choose because we know many artists out there who 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 don't know what the music is and they just go in the mic go on a microphone and they sing anything comes to their mouth they don't think about what they're singing and and what you're telling to the children because whatever the children whatever we said to the children that's what they're gonna do children live what they learn True. so especially in a place like jamaica where everyone understand what you're saying and you're not saying the right thing that's what they're gonna do you tell them about guns they're gonna take guns You know, you tell them love, they're going to deal with love. Just like when I was growing up and listening to Uroy, he was my teacher. Uroy, Dennis Al Capone, Iroy, Prince Jasbo, those guys were my teacher. They inspired me to to be who I am today, you know. Uh, we already talked about uh, your collaboration and to name it all, there are too many artists and this interview would be way too long. But uh, you worked with artists such as Ken Booth, uh, you already mentioned Bigger Ranks, Earl 16, Horace, Andy, Sly and Robbie. How important is uh, for an artist to cooperate with such musicians to his own evolving, to becoming better? Well, we are, I, I, am, from, I am from the same street in Kingston where we used to have a record shop called um, Randy's records. We have Randy's, we have Joe Gibbs, we have the Techniques records, we have Gregory Isaac, African Museum. So there was a street that we all standing up in the daytime, you know? Mm -hmm. So we will meet, we would meet every artist. I like, I know all the artists of the 70s. We are friends, we grow together on the same street. So, you know, it wasn't my generation, we never have this word hype. So we don't know what is hype. We are just natural people. We go to do our work. When you go on the stage, you go to perform. And then when you perform, you're just the same person like every other one, everyone else, you know? We don't see ourselves special, you know? Ken Booth is my virgin. Boris Andy is my virgin. Delra Wilson, Freddie McKay, all of them. We grow together, you know? Uh, as one of the impact ar reggae artists uh, whose presence, no doubt, uh, left a big mark, Uh, what would be your advice to younger generation that want to come into the music industry? How to survive so long as you did and on a top level, not to mention? Yeah, man, respect, man. Respect the people that you're around, you know. Respect the people that you're around. Because sometimes you might, you might um, record some songs and you don't even receive your full share or a fair share of the music, but the music can still bring you somewhere you know what i mean the music can break you because i've done songs that i've never been paid for but then it gave me a name and from that name i've i've, I've done a lot of concerts under that same song 
You know what I mean? So it's not about everything about money, money, money. It's about the music to, to build a catalog, you know? What can we expect from uh, Joseph Cotton in your near future? Uh, we already mentioned Global Lockdown, uh, which is one of the newest tunes. Uh, you all also dropped uh, Dreamland uh, tune, which is great. Take me, took me back to Jamaica in a second. Love it. Uh, but what are your plans for 2021? What can we expect from you? Well, just music, you know, but we don't know what, what, the 220, what 2021 is going to bring because 2020 brings nothing. It brings a um, quarantine and lockdown and curfews and stuff like that. So I'm just doing my music, you know, and um, we don't want to make any plans because God is the man who made the plans, you know what I'm saying? So wherever, wherever he leads me or wherever he wants me to go, then that's what I would do. So the only thing I can say that I have plans for, I have um, the music, which is my mission. So I will keep recording and writing songs and, you know, to send out to the fans and to the people who like to do it, who like to listen, you know. But for plans... I don't, I don't have plans. I just do recordings, release it songs. And um, because we, we are in a pandemic now, we don't know what, what coming next. We don't know how long this thing is going to last. You know, so it's very difficult to make a, a plan and say, well, this is what you're going to do. You just got to wait and see the time and see what's happening, you know? Living for today. <laughs> Uh, where, Living for it. <laughs> where can uh, our followers and your fans uh, follow you? Are you active on social medias? And if yes, on which one? Well, it's more, um, it's more like the, the platforms for download, like the Spotify and the Bandcamp and, you know, um, YouTube and stuff like that. I'm not really a, a technology person that knows a lot about... Um, the internet so uh, the, the people who I record for they upload the music on the um, on the on the, the, the social media you know where the people can listen got a lot of followings on the on the um Spotify so that's where the music is you know because the things change it's not like before when we used to press in our records and take it around to the record shops everything is online now especially in these times Kingman, thank you for sharing your thoughts and wisdom with you. I think I could uh, talk with you for hours, but sadly, we have limited time. Yeah, the first thing, I would love to big up the Slovenian people because I came there and the vibes was really global, you know what I mean? The, the, those people are really reggae fanatics, you know, they love the music, I see that. So I would love to say enough respect to those people and hope to see them another time, you know? Yeah, you were here at Tover Jam Festival in... 2017 if i'm not mistaken i think so yeah we actually met and talked in the backstage back there yeah man i remember man i remember i remember that was a great moment the only thing was that freddie mac freddie mac freddie mcgregor couldn't work because of the rain and stuff but yeah true. overall it was a great it was a great time you know yeah uh, if i can quickly just uh, touch the subject i uh, almost forgot you also have a song with Slovenian group called uh, Yugoslavians. I think it's called Mad. Uh, it was produced yeah, by man, Harry that... Spilton. How did that link up come up? Yeah. Um, how did that link up? I think it came through... Who did it came through? Some guys in, in London. I can't remember if it was Earth 16, but I remember he sent me a message on, on, on um, Facebook and we, we speak about it. And he, he also produced some very good songs. I mean, I think that he, he, he takes it very seriously. And most of the songs is, is like live musicians. So he's a good guy, you know. He have a good spirit. And I think that he's going to build up a great catalog in, 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 in time to come, you know. We hope so. Uh, well, yeah. once again, thank you for your time. And I really hope uh, we can continue one day on, uh, in some backstage again talk some more Enough respect, most definitely King. King most definitely most definitely thank you and, have and a... big up to, big up to you and the crew big up to you and the crew enough thanks thank you sir yo, yo.
How are you some of the birthday? Who are you want to see a chum here come on and go, you know? Eh, it's a place where I love to go myself, you know? Then we can take a vacation, you know? Watch ya. Well, this is one and him, hi. Yes, reggae SI, you moving up. I meditation, we are pushing the water to the sky. Well, we don't get no matter how them try. I we are say reggae SI.